Good morning, Prepper Nation. This is John. If you're new here, welcome. And again, also, where you've been, we've been waiting on you. Feel free to take your shoes off, kick your feet up on the couch, the proverbial couch here this morning, son. And we're talking truth serum. A little dose of truth serum uh, this morning and moving forward, actually. We're going to have ourselves a blast on this video, and we're going to have a blast on this channel moving forward, but I believe in full transparency, so I've got to explain how we got here, okay? So I want to start with, okay, it's Monday, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's Monday. It's Monday morning. How could it not be? <laughs> and um, I, I, weird question. Have you ever seen the Disney movie, The Great and Powerful Oz? It is a remake of The Wizard of Oz. Got Michelle, I think it's Michelle Phillips from Dawson's Creek, the blonde haired chick. I think that's her name. I don't know who else is in this movie. But I, I can remember this is the last decent Disney movie that I've seen. Um, and I bring this up for a reason because at the beginning of this movie, there's this guy again, don't know the dude's name. I ain't seen this since my kids were like four years old. It's been a minute. It's been out for a while, but he's a magician and he's traveling with the carnival at the beginning. I, I guess I should say spoiler alert in case you've never seen the movie right <laughs> you don't have to rush out and go buy it or anything the point i'm trying to make isn't too relevant to having watched the entire movie but i digress he's a magician got the top hat got the cane got all of the abracadabra words and all of this stuff but there's a scene toward the beginning where uh you know he does his magic show he goes backstage. His his beautiful assistant is back there. She's like, that was a really good show. And and he, you know, makes the comment. I'm paraphrasing again because I haven't seen it in a while. And my mind's getting older here. But he makes the comment some, something along the lines of, I hate doing this. I hate pretending that magic is real. I hate pretending that what I'm doing is important. You know, I hate taking these rubes for a ride for a little bit of coin on the side. And I think this applies to our prepping community. Okay, I, I really, really do. So, um, woke up this morning. You, It's a mystery. You never know. You never know what the hot topic in the prepping community is going to be. But what you do know is it's going to be one of the things listed right here, and it's going to be a total echo chamber. All of the channels are going to be talking about the same thing. And listen, if you have a channel, I don't really care what you're doing. I'm just trying to make a point here. All right. Any listener, any viewer right now that is watching this or, or listening to this, they know I'm telling them the truth. All right. One, one big channel picks up or they start bird dogging on a topic. The next thing you know, 20 channels are bird dogging on the same topic, okay? And if you want to skip through the riffraff in the, in the prepping community, prepping.com. They're not paying me to say that. I'm not endorsed by them whatsoever. But if you go to prepping.com, you go from about 10,000 listings to about 50, okay? But even then, it's an echo chamber. So I woke up this morning. Lo and behold, just like last, I'm dropping my ink pen, just like last week, we're back on famine. You see where my finger's at? My handwriting's terrible. All right. We're back on famine. We're, we're back on the coming food shortage. And I said, I remember asking last week, and it was a legitimate um, question. I said, hey, raise your hand. If you've ever lived through a famine, have you ever lived through a famine? Here were the replies. No, 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 no. Can't say that I have. No. A couple of people said, well, 
My grandparents lived through the Great Depression, so I guess that counts. No, that doesn't count. Because there was food during the Great Depression. People just didn't have jobs. All right? So that was not a famine. But really, you go from famine to I've got a bad feeling. I woke up with a bad feeling. I had a dream about something. Uh, lockdowns. Lockdowns are coming back. Down here in the corner, we've got red alert. Red alert. <laughs> red alert after red alert. The Middle East at the bottom. As though anybody viewing this right now lives in the Middle East. But whatever. Boots on the ground. Boots on the ground. I'm surprised I can read all of these. Martial law being initiated. And then this one I call, I didn't really know what to call it, old man shouting at the sky. In other words, old man just pissed off about something that, you know, the country ain't what it used to be. Old man is shouting at the sky, right? Herein lies the problem. And then we'll move on because I'm kind of bored with it. All right. Got my, got my handy dandy ink pen out. That's the last 20 weeks. That is the last 20 weeks in the prepping community. You want to know what the last 50 weeks in the prepping community look like? Are you getting a picture here? Because I think I'm getting ready to tear through the, uh, the paper here. <laughs> People talk in circles in this community over and over and over. And over and over and over. And it's just like the magician from the movie, The Great and Pow Powerful Laws. You cannot tell me that people don't know what they're doing when they continue to talk in circles. This is about playing the rubes, you being the rube, if you tune into it. And look. I can respect the fact that some of you some of you admitted to it last week. I respect you for it. You said I'm addicted to the fear porn. You literally said that in the comments. I got to have my daily dose of gloom and doom. That's fine. If that's you, that's you. You're a grown up. I'm not directing this toward you, okay? Because you are being played and you are being played by fake magicians. Some of them have top hats and canes and they're selling stuff. Some of them don't even have that. Some of them have just watched the ones with the top hats and the canes and they aspire. You know, they're nut riders. They aspire to one day be good enough to have a top hat and a cane. And I'm sitting here this morning as I hear about famine. Eating cookie crisp. I ain't kidding you, son. We're going to get to that story in a minute. Brand name. Brand name cookie crisp, which is a rarity. Brand name cereal in this house. And I'm hearing the food is running out. And I'm crunching on cookie crisp and milk. Because who don't eat it without milk? You weirdo. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I was with my wife yesterday when we bought this. We always go grocery shopping together. It's one of our things. Um, now, we got this particular box of said cookie crisp at Food City. The food was everywhere. Food everywhere. We also stopped at Aldi. We, we didn't necessarily stop at Aldi for food. Um, again, we'll get into the story in a minute, but sometimes Aldi carries other stuff on some of their aisles. It's not food related. Sometimes we'll go in and we'll find something cool. Uh, that's cheap enough. We didn't. We ended up buying some grapes. My wife got some seedless grapes and I got some off brand pumpkin coffee that is questionable at best. And I'm going to underline questionable at best. 
but there was food everywhere. Now, I will say, Aldi was much busier. It looked like the the old Black Friday when they had the door busters. People are saving money. They're looking for places to save money. Now, hey, I don't blame them. I'm not faulting them for this. Okay, but I'm saying even people were hanging. It's like people were hanging off the rafters in this place, you know, to, to save a dime. And they still had food everywhere. There's no famine. It's a freaking lie. And I'm tired. I, I'm not even tired of talking about it anymore. I'm bored with it. I'm bored with talking about all of the circular talk over and over and over. It's one of the things that I despise, not about prepper nation, but about prepping community in general. It's just all circular. It's the same nonsense over and over, and I get bored. It's like watching, you know how it is. You watch a movie, and you're like, it's a pretty good movie. Man, famine, you know. You're going to notice this moving forward. I don't have a lot of notes with me either, right? It's going to be talking off the cuff the way it should have always been. But uh, I digress. The, The movie's pretty decent the first time around. But when you're seeing it every single week, and you're seeing the same actors putting a movie on, just spinning it a little bit different. You know what I'm saying? That the sales pitch moves from trying to sell you survival food this way to eh, let's move a few of the words around, and now we'll try and sell it to them this way. Now we'll try and sell it to them this way. I, I get bored with it. And I've been totally transparent on this channel. Some of y'all said, hey, man, you work for BattleBox. I don't work for BattleBox. Occasionally, I will tweet out something of theirs, uh, but they could pull their stuff tomorrow. I really don't care. I did for a while consider working with Goldback. I made the decision not to do that just because I, I don't I don't like commercially stuff. So I just feel like there are too many important topics that we can be talking about right now other than again famine i got a bad feeling down in my gut these sorts of things i had a dream and now i'm I'm stacking it to the rafters not making fun of anybody right but i'm just saying i've heard this same old song and dance for so long that it makes you question the sanity of some people, uh, you know, who continue to talk in circles every single week. Um, we're going to, moving forward, full transparency, again, on this channel, that's how we do things. We're going to be talking about a variety of different things. Yeah, we're going to be covering some prepping. But listen, let, let's Let's call it spade a spade this morning, okay? Let, let's be honest with ourselves. How many times do we really need to talk about a water catchment system? I did a video. I showed you the water catchment system I had. Uh, told you I'd gotten it on Amazon. Dropped a direct link. Explained how it worked. Went outside, showed it, explained how it worked. You know, we've talked about using bandanas or, uh, you know, whatever to uh, she moths to um, strain the water, how to boil the water. Like I've sh- the, the Berkey that we use and the filters and things. How many times do we have to talk about that? How many videos do we have to do of that? Not only do I have them here in the video section, but there are probably 10,000 other videos on Berkey's. 10,000 other videos here on YouTube on water catchment. You know what I mean? I'm not going to continue to make the same videos over and over and over or have the same discussions over and over and over. I'm getting bored with it. I'm getting bored with talking in circles incessantly and, and these buzzwords and these keywords that people drop in chat. You know what I mean? Two is two is one, one is none. I'm not saying that's incorrect. I'm saying we've all heard it 10,000 times. 
Have we not? I mean, again, maybe you're new here. Welcome. If you are, welcome. It's going to be a heck of a ride moving forward. You might want to hit subscribe, but but in all uh, you know, in all seriousness, I'm not going to be refilming videos. I had somebody last week because I was asking specifically, what do y'all want to talk about next week? And they said, hey, you know, we should talk about what martial what martial law would look like here in the United States. And I was thinking to myself when I read this comment. We've talked about this two or three times. There are two or three separate videos on this already. I'm not going to talk about this again. Go to the video section. Spend five minutes until you find it. Search keywords. I don't know how that stuff works. You know what I'm saying? So I got to get to the meat and the potatoes of the video. Believe it or not, all of this rambling is not the meat and the potatoes. We went to Goodwill yesterday. Many of them, actually. Patreon already knows this. Um, I don't know what it is about the Goodwill. I have not found, I call it a hit. When I find something that's, that I like that's well-priced, I call it a hit. I've not found a hit at a Goodwill in my, God, five years or more. At least. And I used to tell people on the, you know, Prepper Nation, oh, the Goodwill is a great place to shop for, you know, winter clothing. And you can get some wool items there. Sometimes you can get some camping items. You can get you a bucket bag. Bro, I didn't see anything at any of these places. The best thing that I found, and I'm not kidding when I say this. This is not tongue in cheek. I found a plush, it was about this tall, red Teletubby, and I almost bought it. This thing had a dirty face, and I wasn't sure I'd be able to get it clean. Otherwise, I was going to buy it. I was going to put it back here, right? And every time I heard a famine was coming, I was going to open the show with that little baby son laughing. You know what I mean? Because it's that comical to me at this point. But they wanted $8 for the Teletubby plush. And I said, no, nah, son. What are y'all smoking over here? There's nothing in these places. We went to uh, probably 40 or 50 miles, the radius. Goodwill, Salvation Army stores, thrift stores, you know, that are independently owned, things like this. I found nothing. We went into the bigger Goodwill that we have here in uh, Mount Airy. Tons of coffee cups. I said, okay. Okay. I'm going to find me a coffee cup in here. All right. Every coffee cup over there was from the Dollar Tree except for one. And it was a standard white cup that said liquor is quicker. That's it. That's all they had in this place. I haven't seen a VCR because I've been I've been kind of waiting on one. Different discussion for a different day, I guess. But I haven't seen a VCR at a Goodwill in about five years. Laser disc player, forget about it. Forget about it. Coats, forget about it. I even went through and I looked at the blazers, you know, that you wear because. I said, I'd really like to get a blazer maybe for the channel again. Kind of miss doing that. It's been a minute. Been a hot minute for those long timers out there. They all suck. They all suck. They look like they're off the Jeffersons. Apparently, everybody's being buried in their best blazers now. You can't. Within 50 miles of where I live, okay, it may be different where you're at. You cannot feasibly anymore prep on Goodwill stuff. You just can't do it. The stuff is not there. You know, they're selling chiclets gum up front. You know, they, they got five packs of panties that you don't know if you are they used or not. They had three CDs, 
three was the most I saw at any of these thrift stores. Two of them were burned, and I have no idea what, what was on them. Was it music? Was it data? The third was the Frozen soundtrack from Disney, and I said, no, I'm not, I'm not doing this. Plus, the Goodwill has went up so much on their prices, man. It's not even worth it anymore. I said, what is going on here? I think it's a combination. Honest, honestly, I think it's a combination of three things. Number one, the Goodwill, I think it's called shopgoodwill.com. They have their own eBay-style website now, which in itself tells you pretty much all you need to know. I haven't seen a gaming system in at least 10 years. 10 years in a Goodwill. And what's happening is the employees will pull the good stuff off to the side and they auction it off on eBay. No, thanks. I'm not interested. I'll just go to eBay and I'll support a small business. I'm not going to bid on something that was given to you. Goodwill, sorry. The second thing is, I think people are really, really shopping at the Goodwill. I mean, we talk about hunting deer into, you know, venison into extinction or near extinction or fishing ponds and lakes almost to extinction. I think the good stuff at the Goodwill that does get passed these these eagle-eyed employees. I think it's being hunted into extinction. You know what I mean? People can't afford stuff right now, so when they see something, they know it's a good deal, they're buying it up fast. And then resellers. Don't get me started on resellers. I talked about this on the other channel, and a couple of people said, John, what's wrong with you? Are you a commie? That's capitalism. It's capitalism. People are just buying to resell. They're making their money. There's nothing wrong with that. No, there's nothing wrong with that. But let me tell you something. You ever go into a Goodwill and you see somebody and they've got $250, $300 worth of clothes in their buggy and they're scanning every single item to see what it what shows up on Etsy or eBay or whatnot. And they're just doing it, you know, for the money. If you go on the other side of the aisle and you get in front of these people and you start pulling stuff down and you're like, oh my God, this is expensive. I wonder if my daughter wants this. And you walk away. You take a look at the way they look at you. It's like they got, they're an exclusive club and you're not. And you're not supposed to be buying anything before they go through and pick it. So, no, I'm not a huge fan of uh, resellers in general, but I think it's a combination of these three things. I've also noticed, I got to mention this real quick, because we're still having yard sales. I mean, we've hit a few small flea markets and things. Matter of fact, shout out to Domestic Gangsta, who um, I posted yesterday on Patreon. Hey, we're hitting all the Goodwills. Found nothing. And she was like, we're actually out flea marketing. Also found nothing. People want full price for everything. You know, I'll stop at a yard sale and, and I'll see a climate bag. I'm like, oh, you know, what do you have on the climate bag? 60 bucks. I'm like, bro, it's 60 bucks at Dick's Sporting Goods. Can you, know, can you come down a little bit or you got any wiggle room? No. Okay, we'll keep the climate bag. Like people just, I don't know if it's, uh, they're hurting for money. Or they just don't get it. They don't get the concept of, of a yard sale or flea market or what. The economy's crazy right now. And it's starting to hit the secondhand market hard. Uh, so if you have any stories on that, let me know. But, but moving forward on this channel, it's going to be an interesting ride. It's going to be an interesting ride indeed. We'll, we'll talk about important things as they pertain to prepping. But we're not going to talk in circles. We're not going to talk about nonsensical prepping things. And this will be a channel where I think a lot of people are going to be entertained moving forward. But it's also not going to be a channel for everybody. You know what I mean? Again, some people need that gloom and doom hooked to them every morning uh, like an IV. You know what I mean? 
And, and that's awesome. If that's you, that's awesome. You do you, boo. Here's the thing. You're in luck. Because there are hundreds, if not thousands, of prepping channels that are doing the monkey see, monkey do echo chamber thing. And they want to scare you and they want to sell you things. So they're there for you. They're there for you like, what is it, State Farm or Allstate or something like that. Um, but you're not going to get that experience here uh, moving forward. So anyway, folks, this is John with Prepper Nation. Let me know what you think in the comments. Y'all take care. God bless.